An American nurse theorist and nursing professor, Jean Watson was known for her well-known theory about philosophy and theory of transpersonal caring. With writing numerous articles and texts, Watson has contributed to nursing care in a better spectrum. Jean Watson was born with the name Margaret Jean Harmon and was raised in Welch, West Virginia. Youngest in the family of eight, it was evident that she was surrounded by the love and care of her family, a caring community. In 1961, she graduated from Lewis Gale School of Nursing in Roanoke, Virginia. And that is where Watson's journey began in the field of nursing. After graduating from nursing school, Watson married her late husband, Douglas Watson, and moved to the West where Douglas's native state was Colorado. In 1997, while playing golf with her amigas, Jean had an accident that caused her to lose sight of her left eye. After losing her left eye, she was utterly devastated, but fortunately, her friends, family, and most importantly, her husband were there to support and comfort her during her despair. She frequently receives hospitable visits from her friends and family at their home. Her husband, though, was the factor that helped her the most. Douglas never left her side, helped her out when she needed it and was the one who pushed her to pursue her amazing and mind-blowing career. Douglas was indeed a passionate and loving spouse, up until to the point that he left Jean. The sudden death of Douglas Watson led Jean Watson to start the theory of transpersonal caring. Furthermore, when Watson started her theory, it became a way for her to broaden her ideas that address various health illness phenomenons. Otherwise, Jean Watson's theory has been clarified between the relationship of the nurse and the patient as well as on the existential, phenomenological, and spiritual factor. On the other hand, Watson envisioned that Watson caring science and unitary views are universal and transdisciplinary. And now that we have discussed Jean Watson and her theory about caring, let us now present some situation where transpersonal caring has been applied in the real world. In the first reenactment, this takes place in the pre-pandemic wherein the application of the theory is direct. Under the bright sunny day, a pregnant woman is waiting for a jeepney to drop off. She is in her ninth month of pregnancy and she is expecting her child to be delivered anytime soon. Minutes later, she felt tolerable contractions in her belly. She shrugged the pain off because it is not that bad at all. However, after ignoring the light contractions, she felt another pain but it is more intense than earlier. Suddenly, there is a clear liquid gushing down her legs. And as the fluids gush down her legs, the contractions get worse. In a state of panic, she fell to her feet and screamed and asked for help. In a nearby distance, a nurse is also waiting for a jeepney. He noticed that someone was screaming, and upon observation, it was the pregnant woman. He immediately rushed to the woman to help her deliver the baby. The woman was crying and panicking because of the unexpected event. He reassured her and tried to calm her down by saying that everything will be alright and she, together with her baby, will be safe. The woman was nervous because he is a man and demands a woman to help her. The nurse knew that he could not help her if she didn't trust him and the both of them failed to have a patient nursing relationship. To comfort her and gain her trust, she called the woman who is also waiting for a jeepney. He told the woman to push as hard as she can to let the baby out of her womb. However, she is having a hard time pushing and letting the baby out. Out of pain, she cursed and almost kicked him. The nurse ignored it and remembered that this is normal. 
He then told her that she needs to be strong for her child because that is the only way to overcome this situation. The nurse instructed the, the pregnant woman to push and take deep breaths as they deliver the baby. On the other hand, the bystander is comforting, motivating, and patting the woman to help her emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. After several pushes, screams, and deep breaths, the baby was almost out of her womb. The nurse was excited and he affirmed the mother's effort. She was proud and comfortable with the help the nurse provided her. And she took one last push and the deepest breath in her life. And the baby was delivered successfully. The nurse cleaned and prepared the baby. And to satisfy and comfort the mother, he wrapped the baby in a cloth. The nurse called an ambulance and helped the mother until she arrived at the hospital to give her and the baby proper medical care. After a day, he visited the mother again in the hospital and there she was with her family. They're happily laughing and bonding together with the baby. The mother saw him and called him to give him a big hug and thanks for delivering the baby. In the given act, it was clearly shown how Watson's theory impacted emotionally the newly mother. Caring emotionally has created a different kind of care to patients that has developed into a better way of understanding the patient's needs. Knowing the factors that could have a better knowledge on the patient kind of care can help develop a suitable caring plan for a specific patient. Another situation where the application of the theory of transpersonal caring has evolved and developed is in the pandemic setting. It is widely known that physical contact is somehow hard in the present setting. Showing how we adapt to the situation amidst a pandemic explains how nurses develop Watson's theory even though there are now new limitations to the said theory. Let us have an example of this development. And this reenactment starts on a typical sunny morning. There is a man who is carrying supplies of a sack of rice to be loaded to a vendor. The wet market is busy with people doing their shopping for their daily necessities. Until they did not expect that the man who was carrying the sack of rice dropped it on the floor and down onto his knees. A girl named Glyso went to help him and asked if he was doing fine or in need of help. Suddenly, the man grunts in pain and pain is evident on his face. The people are simply walking past while glancing at them. The girl runs to the vendor and asks if she could call a rescuer or a medic that could respond to the man in distress. The girl went back to the man who was in pain and the man held his head and the pain just could not stop to the point that his eyes shed tears. The rescuer arrives and checks the vital signs for the man. After assessing the man, they found out that the man developed into a better condition because of the first aid procedure. The man was thankful to the girl that helped him and was thankful to the rescuers for making sure everything was on path regarding his conditions. Just as shown in the reenactment, Glyza considered the condition of the man who was carrying rice sacks. Knowing that maybe the man was overworked and dehydrated from his work, thus this had initiated Glyza to perform first aid procedure to the man, assuring him that everything was going to be alright. It was also right for the vendor to contact medical rescuers as the situations of the pandemic makes it limited to have physical touch. Medical rescuers know the risk of having to aid care to injured people, even in the middle of the pandemic. This clearly shows how the theory of transpersonal care has evolved through the years and how Jean Watson was able to look in the different directions on caring for the patients in need. The psychological and emotional support 
that nurses have brought in nursing or caring plans of patients depict that not only in physical and medical caring is the focus of nurse, but also to be a support system to their patients. Jean Watson, until now, is an inspiration in her contribution on how to care for patients on emotional and psychological leveling. Her theory shall still be of use in the future, as no human being can ever survive without emotion and sympathy.